This is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 105. In this episode, I will show you more than 35 new features in 13 different Google Apps. So make sure all your Google Apps are up to date and let me show you what's new. Before starting, just a quick reminder about the Wallpapers by In-Depth Tech Reviews app. Now version 3 is live on Google Play Store, which includes some important improvements based on your feedback. So you can enjoy things like the new saturation slider, better search, and more. You'll find Google Play Store download link in the description. And now let's get back to Google Apps. Let's start the episode by talking about the new changes in Google Chrome. The first change is related to the autofill feature. Every time you try to insert your password and username using the Google Password Manager, you will see this new redesigned overlay card that will ask you for a confirmation before passing these details to the website. And if you don't want this to happen in the future, you can take the I trust this website option before hitting the confirm button. The second change is related to the zoom. So when you open a website and then tap the ellipses and then go to the zoom option, now you will see a new reset button that will allow you to get back to the default value when you change it like this. Moving to Chrome settings, when you scroll down and then go to site settings, you will see a lot of new options added here. The first one is called file editing and this is how it looks. And when you scroll down to the bottom, you will see something called V8 optimizer. The description says Chrome runs faster and features that use JavaScript should work as designed and you still can add site exception that will block this website from using the V8 optimizer. And the last addition here is called saved zoom for sites, which will save your zoom preference per website. So let me show you a quick example. Let's say I want to zoom this web page and every time I close it and revisit it, it will always start at this zoom level. But if I want to clear my preferences, I can jump back again to settings and then site settings. And here I will find my saved preference automatically added. I can delete individual items from here or clear all of them using this button. Now let's talk about Gcam and here I'm gonna show you six new changes. If you are running Gcam version 9.8, when you go to settings and then advanced, you will see a new toggle here called turn on animation for astrophotography. And if you have this feature activated, it will simply show you an animation on the screen while snapping the shot. But if you want to only see the counter, you can turn off the switch. And this is a side-by-side -side comparison between the two. Google also updated the sound effects of the astrophotography mode in comparison to the normal photos. So let's take a listen. The first change is in the timer sound. Here's a new sound added that plays every 30 seconds to let you know that the phone is still working so you don't need to check it yourself. And finally, the ending sound is also different. Back to the camera settings, you will see that the palm timer now says that you can use it with the front or rear cameras, which always been the case for me, but this is the first time to see it explicitly mentioned in the description. Moving to the video boost, in one of my previous episodes, I showed you that Gcam preserve your video boost preferences. So for example, when you enable it and quit the camera app, then open it again, it will stay active. But after installing version 9.8, you are back again to the same old behavior, which requires activating the feature every single time. We also got a new haptic feedback in the pro controls. And when you slide your finger over the slider, you will get haptic feedback for every single step, which feels very satisfying. And lastly, the leveler got a small visual tweak and you will notice here that the alignment lines are slightly shorter than before. Beside this, all the other new features are part of March 25 pixel drop, which I already covered in other videos that you will find the links in the description below. Now let's talk about the Find My Device app, which got a complete revamp. So let me show you what's new. This new update is part of March 25 pixel drop that I didn't get at the time of filming my original videos about the update. But thankfully, a friend of mine sent me the download link from APK Mirror that updates the app to version 3.1.277-4. And when you scroll down a bit, you will see two versions. The first one didn't work on my 9 Pro XL, but the second one did work. So you need to try both depending on your pixel model. And I will leave this download link in the description if you want to check it out. And now let's take a look at the new changes. 
So here is a side by side comparison with the previous version and as you see the home page has a completely different design and instead of showing you the list of devices immediately now it will show you the map your current location and the list of devices are showing in an overlay card that you can expand or collapse like this and the family devices tab got removed and now you will see these filters at the top that will switch between the devices and then we have this new refresh button a button to locate yourself on the map and then you have here two tabs at the bottom one for devices and one for people previously if you want to see the map you have to tap on any device other than the one you are currently using and then it will try to locate it on the map like this but now it looks totally different Another big change is the ability to see your current location which is represented with this blue dot in comparison to the devices you have while previously when you tap on any device you can only see this device location but your current location doesn't show on the map so let me open the same device on both as you see here I have a blue dot for myself and another tooltip for the device I'm currently viewing but other than this, they are exactly the same. The profile menu also got updated and now you will see this new container around it. And when you go to both, you will see a couple of new options added, blocked users and the location sharing settings, which I'm gonna talk about later. And now let's take a look at the new people tab. First of all, this feature is labeled as beta. And when you open it, you will see two tabs at the top. The first one showing the list of accounts that are sharing with you. And here I have my son and another test account I created. And when you start sharing with others, this tab will be activated. The feature is powered by Google Maps and you have a button to locate yourself and a plus button to start sharing with others. First, it will show me this animated card with my image, name, and the phone's battery. And then I have a button to adjust the sharing duration. I can choose one of these presets or pick a custom time. And here I have two different designs to choose from. After that, you have a section for picking one of the contacts you already have, or you can search and input the Gmail account you want to share with. And then you have the ability to share your live location using a link. And when you tap on share, it will create the link that you can copy or send it right away using the share sheet. And later, if you want to stop sharing, you can simply tap on the link and stop sharing from here. Let me also show you how it works when I share with a specific Gmail account. So when I tap on the plus and pick this account, then tap on share, now when I tap on this person, I have the ability to tap on the ellipses and the block it. And that's where you can see the blocked users under the profile menu. Back to the app, let me also show you that when you tap on the profile menu and then go to location sharing settings, while sharing your live location with others, it will show you your current Gmail account that the feature is currently activated and the accounts you are currently sharing with. And if you have multiple ones, they appear over here and you can still stop the sharing from this page as well if you want to. Now let's talk about Gemini and let me show you six new changes. The first change is under the profile menu. Now you will see that the extensions option is called apps, but when you go inside, you will see pretty much the same thing, no difference. It's just a name change. Google also started to push some of the paid features to free Gemini users. And one of these features is called saved info. This feature will allow Gemini to remember some information about you and later if you ask Gemini about something related it will give you more personalized results based on this saved info. For example you can ask it to remember your food preferences, your allergies, the things that you don't like and when you hit the send button it will give you a confirmation that it now has this information saved under a page called saved info with a quick link to access this page. The only difference between the free version and the paid version is I don't have the saved info option in the profile menu like I do in my paid version. Another feature made its way to the free users is the ability to generate images of people using Imagine 3 model. And here is the result I received. You can also tap and hold on the image to copy, share and save. Moving to iOS, Google added some new features as well. The first one is the new lock screen widget. So when you try to customize your lock screen and then tap on the widgets section and then choose Gemini, you will find these new widgets that you can add to your lock screen. 
and you can do the same for the lock screen shortcuts you can customize it by adding one of these gemini shortcuts and finally you can do the same under the control center moving to the app itself the first thing you will notice is the keyboard opens automatically once you open the app and the bar at the bottom now looks exactly the same as on android google got rid of the camera and the mic icons fill and now you have the gemini live and the microphone icon and the same plus button on both and lastly google released a free ai coding assistance for any language called gemini code assist that you can use in visual studio code jetbrains and github now let's talk about google maps and here i'm going to show you three new changes the first one is only available on android 16 beta 2.1 which i have here on my pixel 8 pro this feature is called live updates so for example when you start navigation to any place and then go back to the home screen and then close the picture in picture window you will see a new pill at the top left corner and this pill is interactive it will show you the current direction plus when you tap on it it will expand into a full banner that you can see the full details and also exit the navigation from here the second change is the more customization options for the navigation arrow tapping on it will allow you to choose between different new cars that we didn't have before and you will get eight different colors to choose from and as you see here when i choose any color it will be applied to the full list except for the last three options that we used to have before you have to use the default color in this case and lastly the offline maps notification page got redesigned it looks more modern and it gives you three different options to choose from at the bottom next we have the google play store and here i'm going to show you two new changes the first change is the removal of the peer-to-peer -peer app sharing so when you go to my apps you will no longer see the option to send and receive apps offline with others like before and the uh, only option to do this now is by going to the files app and then go to apps and then select whatever app you want and then tap on share and then use the quick share feature the second change is the new widgets filter so for example when you search for any app you will see a new filter at the top called widgets that will only show you the apps that offer the same now let's talk about google calendar and here i'm going to show you two new changes both of them are on the web and the first one is the integration with gemini this feature is currently under testing through the workspace labs which means it's not officially released but i found it to be very useful for example you can ask it some questions about your upcoming events or use it to schedule a meeting and save yourself some steps the second change is the new appearance menu listed under settings this one will give you the option to switch between light theme or dark theme or choose the system default in addition to modifying the colors and design a little bit now let's talk about the apps that only got one new change and the first one is google photos now when you try to do a partner sharing google added a new switch that will allow you to share photos with your partner from other apps and that will also include the screenshots so if you take a look here you have something called include content from other android apps when you turn on the switch you will be able to include these photos moving to gboard google updated the resize tool with a brand new icon and on the left you can see how it used to look and when you use it you will see some design tweaks as well like the top and bottom handles are now using straight lines and the buttons are using different shape and they also include text and icons not only icons like before but it works pretty much the same way moving to youtube in one of my previous episodes i showed you this brand new music note icon that shows next to the official music channel name and google added the same thing next to the song duration as well in the phone app when you go to the settings page you will see some design tweaks first the category name is now in a smaller font and the first category got renamed to call assist and then you will see that each and every item in the menu now has an icon which wasn't the case before on ios when you use the song search feature in the google app now you have this new button at the top right corner that will take you to the recent song searches unfortunately i couldn't find the same feature on android and for you to reach the same info you have to dig deeper inside your google account 
which is not very convenient. Moving to Google Drive on the web, now you have the ability to transcribe your backed up videos with the timestamps, in addition to the ability to search through your transcripts, which will make your life much easier. So that's pretty much it for today. These are all the new features I wanted to show you. And if you spotted anything new, please reach me out on social media to include in my future episodes. But for now, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.